All right. So we're going to start lying on our back. Block handy where you can reach it. I'm very excited. This should be the last week you have to see my stage pole in shot because I'm getting a fancy webcam. I can't wait. <laughs> Once you're lying on the, back, on the back on your mat, just relax your shoulders down. Let your hips land really heavy. Give the base of your pelvis a little massage into the ground. And what you're actually exploring here is the tuck and the tip of your pelvis. Being able to control both of those positions is really important. And then we'll set neutral pelvis by getting both thumbs in the belly button and the first two fingers of both hands on the pubic mount. We're gonna keep everything below the waist nice and still as we curl up over the ribs and look at the diamond we've created. If your thumb is higher than your fingers, very rare, but sometimes it happens, just tuck a little bit until you find the horizontal. And then if your fingers are higher than your thumb, very common, you'll need to tip your tailbone down towards your toes. And then rest the head back down on the ground, relax the shoulders onto the floor. So I talk about the T-zone in Studio Pilates mat work, which is the pelvic floor along the vertical line. You wanna squeeze that inwards and up. And the transverse abdominal belt runs on the horizontal line. And you wanna feel the space between your hip bones dishing inwards and down. We do both of those things on an exhale through the mouth. So inhale through the nose to begin. And exhale through the mouth. Pelvic floor lifting, the space between the hips dishing across and down. Hold that contraction for an inhale. Release it slowly as you exhale. Let's do that again, but this time as we squeeze our T-zone, we're also going to feel the fronts of the ribs contracting inwards and down towards the hips. Inhale to prepare. Internally, the T-zone tightens as we exhale externally the ribs dish down towards the hips hold that for a breath in conscious that there's still a little gap under the small of the back and then slowly release it as you breathe out we're going to use our fingers to check we're doing a really great job of that taking the first two fingers on the inside of the hip bone you can slide them in to your second knuckle and then curl the fingertips in and down this is going to feel, you should be able to feel resistance as we activate that T-zone. So inhale to prepare. Exhale, gradually contract. Notice that resistance. Keep it there for your breath in. And slow release as you breathe out. One more time. Inhale to prepare. Let's really slowly strengthen that T-zone contraction. Notice that resistance kick up. Keep it strong on the breath in. And release it slowly as you breathe out. All right. Keeping the chin tucked in, the back of the neck nice and long. We're going to start with the block today between your two hands like this. So your hands are on the edges of the block, pressing in. And we're going to use the block for feedback in arm prep. So extending your arms directly up from your chest, draw the ribs down in towards the hips and press the shoulder blades down towards the mat. T-zone is tight as we breathe in. We extend the arms back, pressing into the sides of the block, keeping the ribs down on the exhale. Inhale the arms all the way back up and exhale to extend them back. Now you probably won't reach the floor, that's fine. Just explore the range of your shoulders, pressing into the side of the block, keeping the ribs connected down towards the hips, maintaining the shoulder blades flat against the floor. So pressing into the sides of the block, I'd like you to feel your arms extending as they reach overhead. So rather than allowing the bent elbows to bend and soften, I want you to feel like you can extend that block far, far away, and then inhale it back up. Exhale, extend, inhale to lift. One more like that. Great, and if your block is nice and uh, soft or small, or if the prop that you're using is fat, you won't wanna do this. But if I could now ask you to place that underneath the base of your skull. And that's gonna help us maintain the chin tucking in. Feel the back of the neck lengthen. Feel the collarbones broaden and just allow your arms to rest palms face down onto the floor. 
We're going to start by activating our iliacus. So remembering that that means that it's like our feet are velcroed to the floor and we can't lift them off. So I want you to just practice trying simultaneously, keeping the body and the belly very still to lift both of those legs. T-zone tight as we inhale. Imagining that we're trying to lift the feet off the floor as we exhale. I want you to feel what it's like when the thighs really connect deep into the hip sockets. Hold that for another breath in and relax it as we breathe out. All right, let's see if we can use that iliacus to lift one leg at a time. T-zone tight, we inhale, we come to lift a foot, right leg up as we exhale. Bring it back down to the floor as we breathe in and switch to the left leg as we breathe out. So we're alternating one leg at a time, using the exhale to lift it to tabletop position and the inhale to carefully replace it on the floor. Kept my Ugg boots on today because I'm chilly. <laughs> Don't know if that'll stay the same throughout the workout. Really conscious that the tailbone stays more heavily connected to the floor, still maintaining that tiny little gap under the small of the back. Last one here on the left. We're now going to move into um, bent knee fallout. So think about the T-zone tightening as you inhale. Keeping your left leg very still, the right leg will shift to the side as you exhale. Don't let the hip move though. We want to just move from the groin. Slowly bring it back as you breathe in. Switch slowly to the left as you breathe out. Closing on the inhale, switching on the exhale. Inhaling to close. Exhaling to open. We want to keep those hips really still. We want to make sure one leg is not also moving out. Only one leg is moving at a time. And that can be really challenging. You've got to really focus on the transverse abdominal belt, keeping you connected here. Last one. Nice. We're going to remove the block from behind the head now and place it between the inner thighs. And that's going to help you keep your iliacus activated. So long ways between the inner thighs and we bring the fingertips to the base of the skull for our rectus abdominals crunches. T-zone tight, we inhale, curl up from the ribs, eyes on the thighs as we exhale. Come back down as we breathe in. So we're keeping the chin tucked in, the back of the neck long, and we're trying to curl the ribs down to the hips and scoop the belly out. And while we are trying to lift all the way up onto the tips of our shoulder blades, we're not pushing the mid back into the ground. We're keeping a neutral pelvis. Exhaling to rise, inhaling to roll down. Just one more here today. When we're going to switch into our obliques crunches now. Exhale one side, rib to hip, inhale it down. Exhale the other side, rib to hip, inhale it down. Now I'm very conscious that I say rib to hip connection in your obliques twist. It is a twist through the upper body, but we're not also twisting the shoulder and the elbow. They stay set. Pilates is a postural practice, so we want to think about the shoulders remaining the property of the back. The shoulders belong to your back. So we keep them there. Exhale it over, inhale it down. Exhale it over, inhale it down. Okay, keeping the hands at the base of the skull now, guys. We're gonna bring those legs up to tabletop position. I want you to feel the ribs and the hips move closer together and the space at the small of the back gets smaller. T-zone tightens, inhale. Slowly lift those legs as you exhale. Really feel the belly button draw down through the spine and the space through the hips sucking in towards the low back. We're going to keep these legs in tabletop position here. We're in what's called imprinted spine. So even though your full back doesn't touch the mat, we're much closer to the floor than when we're in neutral. Rectus abdominals, crunches, T-zone tight, we breathe in, curling up as we breathe out. Lower it down on the inhale and rise again on your exhale. Keeping that belly nice and flat. Keeping the collarbones open. The chin is tucking in, the back of the neck is lengthening and we focus on the crown of the head, extending directly up towards our ceiling or for those of you lucky people practicing outside, up towards the sun. Let's 
try extending the arms as we exhale to add a little bit more challenge. Extend the arms towards the legs as you come up. Bring them back, open the elbows and return to the ground. Exhale, curl up and extend. Replace the arms, inhale, return. Exhale, curl up and extend. Replace the arms, inhale, return. Two more like this. Last one. All right, keep those legs where they are. We have one more exercise. Your rest break is coming. Hang in there. You can give your hips a little rock if you need to. Keep the knees right on top of the hips, the heels in line with the knees. Obliques, twist. Inhale, T-zone tight. Exhale, the right rib to the left hip. Inhale, it down, and then exhale to switch sides. Good, keep going with that. We'll do two more in our base level. And if you want to make this one a little bit more interesting, go ahead and extend your arm across the body towards the opposite thigh. And as you do that, drop the shoulder. You want to keep the space between the ear and the shoulder, the neck length, as generous as possible. Keep that bottom nice and still as you exhale it over. Inhale it down. We have two to go. We're going to reach the right over to the left. The left over to the right. Bring the head down onto the ground. Take the block out from between the thighs. Draw the knees in. Give them a really tight squeeze. And then you can go for three circles in one direction. Three circles in the other direction. How are we going, guys? Abs, abs are awake. We know where they are, right? Bring those legs back up to tabletop now. If you feel like you are a chin poker rather than a chin tucker, you can put the block back underneath your head if you so wish. This is our single toe tap. So making sure that your knees aren't too close to your belly button. They're right on top of your hip bones and that the heels stay the same height as the knees. We're going to squeeze the belly tight, lift the pelvic floor, breathing in, and the right tiptoe is going to touch the bottom of the mat as we breathe out. Slowly come back up as you inhale and switch to the left tippy tiptoe as you exhale. Bring it up again, breathe in, tap it down again, breathe out. So single toe taps, you want to keep the belly really hollow, rib to hip connection, you keep going. If you want to make this harder, you can extend the leg a little bit and take it further out. If you want to make this easier, you'll need to tap closer to your bottom. Now, I'm going to have to shuffle back away from my wall. That doesn't mean you get to rest. <laughs> you keep going. All right. Let me check on you. Looking fantastic. We're going to take that up into our single leg stretch now, my loves. So, come back to your tabletop position. Inhale the T-zone tight. Want to exhale, curl up. Grab the right knee with both hands and extend the left leg until it is perfectly straight. Inhale to transition and exhale to squeeze. Sorry, I forgot to... Yeah, I did tell you to curl up. Exhale to squeeze. Inhale to switch. So, drop the shoulders down as you pull that knee towards your nose and pull the ribs in towards your spine to help you curl up. Use that out breath. Keep the heels lifted. Scissoring those legs through space. Nice. Chantel, you're doing a great job in that brace. Looking amazing, Rachel. Good, Sharon. Good, Rach. Nice, Sarah. Keep going with it. Curl up a little higher if you can. Really curl the ribs down. Crown of the head towards the ceiling. Nice, Anita. Sitting up as tall as you can. Just for three, two, one, hug the knees into the chest, give them a squeeze, go for three circles in one direction and three circles in the other direction. So for this next exercise, we are going to bring the block back between the thighs. This one's called the pendulum and it's not actually suitable for anyone with a slip disc or a lumbar disc hernia. Um, so if you do have either of those conditions, I would just ask that you go back to your single toe tap or if you're familiar with the exercise, you can practice a bicycle leg. Head down or head up, up to you. We are going to practice the pendulum. So keeping the knees right on top of the hips, imprinting the spine. So far we've been practicing lifting the ribs but keeping the hips in position. Now we're going to practice lifting one hip at a time but keeping the ribs 
flat on the floor. You'll need to extend your arms out like a letter T. Just keep them in line with your rib cage rather than in line with your ears. T-zone tightens as we inhale. We're gonna roll gently towards the right hip, keeping the left rib down as we exhale. Pause here for a breath and exhale back to the center. You should feel that bite in the left side of the waist. T-zone tight as we inhale. Take it over to the left as we exhale. Hold it, feel the bite in the waist, belly flat, breathe in. Come back to the center as we breathe out. Now we're gonna speed it up and smooth it out. Inhale it over to the side. Exhale it back to the center. Inhale it over to the side. Exhale it back to the center. So there's absolutely no movement at all from the waist up. Inhale it over. Exhale, return. Shoulders are rolling back and down. Inhale it over. Exhale, return. I'm gonna come and check on you. Keep going. This is a really challenging exercise when you focus on doing it properly. Great form, really good. Focus on keeping the backs of the ribs connected to the ground. Nice. Last one. And done. Beautiful. So getting into our obliques today. Okay. It's time for our favorite little exercise, our Pilates 100s preparation. I might let me kick my uggies off now. And today we're gonna to do the Pilates 100s prep with the block between the ankles. Cool, so I've got this lengthways from the ankle bone up along the shin. And when we use the block in this position, its purpose is to remind us not to drop the feet below the knees. Also adds a little bit of load, so your abs have to work harder. You're welcome. <laughs> so bring it up into a tabletop position. If you've not done a hundreds prep before, the upper body will curl up on the exhale with the arms coming down towards the hips. And on the inhale, we return to our start position. We wanna keep the arms in line with the rib cage and never reach back behind that because we're trying to keep our abdominals under tension and keep the ribs contained. We're also gonna be extending the legs, but I'll add that on once we get started. Let's go together. T-zone tight, we inhale, curl up, sweep those arms down in a semicircle as you exhale. Slowly come back to your start position as you breathe in, curling up, circling the arms down as we breathe out. Inhale back to the start, exhale, curl and sweep. All right, let's add the legs. As we exhale, curl and sweep, take those toes as close to the ceiling as you can, keeping the hips down on the ground. Inhale, take it back to your tabletop position, real careful. Exhale, curl up, squeeze and extend. Inhale, roll down, carefully bend. Good, keep going with that. I want you to really focus on the shoulders, staying down and back. Feeling the backs of the hips connected to the mat. Pelvic floor rising, rib cage descending. You have three more, and I'm coming to look at you. <laughs> nice work, guys. Last two. Beautiful job. One more like that. And you can take a rest. You can hug the knees, give them a squeeze. Three circles in one direction, three circles in the other direction. You're doing so well. I'm very, very proud. Okay, what comes after the 100s prep? 100s. So you have the option today of continuing to hold the block at the ankle. That will increase the load. So this increases the work of the 100s. This is harder. To get more help from your inner thigh, so if you want your inner thighs to work harder in your 100s, in your iliacus, you can hold the block up between your thighs. If you have a tendency towards tight adductors, I don't recommend you do this one frequently. I'm gonna keep the block down between my ankles, but you do what will serve you best. The purpose 
us here is to inhale for five pulses and exhale for five pulses of the arms as we maintain a shape. This is the level one shape. This is the level two shape. And if you want to explore the level three shape, you need to flex, externally rotate, and then take the heels down. We can take one hand to support the base of the skull if the neck's getting tired. If you really need a rest, you're welcome to pop your head down. The feet don't touch the ground until I say we're done. That's the golden rule. So starting with our legs in tabletop position, T-zone tight, breathe in, curling up, reach long through the arms as you breathe out. Roll the shoulders back, curl up taller as you inhale. First five pulses as you exhale. Next five pulses as you breathe in. Let's see if we can take those legs to level two, pressing the tailbone, the flat part of the pelvis, straight down through the ground, hollowing the ribs to hips, really pulling the rib cage down to curl up as tall as you can. If you need a challenge, flex, turn out, get down low, go, go, go. Keep that belly hollow. Feel the transverse abdominus sucking in between the hip bones, reaching long through the fingertips as you inhale for five and exhale for five. Now, technically speaking, it should be 20 rounds of breath in your Pilates 100s. And yeah, if you need to take a quick break, don't put your feet down, Sarah, head only, feet in the air, feet stay up, good. If you need a break, you can rest your head down and then join back in, but keep your feet off the floor. I'm pretty generous, we get a few more than 20 rounds in on a good day, so just keep breathing, keep squeezing, keep pulsing. You're looking amazing. How hollow is your belly? How long is your neck? Good, how straight are your legs? Tails, feet off the floor. Feet off the floor, come on. You're here for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, what rhymes with one? All done. Bring it down, reach those arms and legs out long and straight, have a big stretch. Beautiful work guys, that was really fantastic. Super stoked. So, nothing too fancy here today. The next exercise I'd like us to look at is one that I've been teaching in my, um, my bar class recently, and it's called the rocking chair. So, for your rocking chair, we're going to have, we're going to use some more spinal curl as we roll down to the ground, and it's probably a good idea for us to practice that before we do it. So coming up to sit in a table, well, coming up to sit, we have to make sure we're in our Pilates train track so that your hip bones track with your kneecaps through to the third toes. So that's the correct setting of the knees. We're going to hold the block out in front of us. Cool. And we're not going to take the arms overhead today. We're going to bring the elbows in as we get to the floor. T-zone rises as we breathe in. And we slowly roll down, elbows coming in one vertebrae at a time as we breathe out. Inhale, T-zone. Tuck the chin to the chest, curl up from the ribs and sit all the way up. Now for some people that's really tough. So the further you take your feet away, the easier the up gets. I know, full sit-ups in Pilates, how rude. T-zone tight, we inhale. One vertebrae at a time, rolling back as we exhale. Elbows come down, head comes to the ground. Set the T-zone as you breathe in and peel away from the floor, pushing the block away as you breathe out. Now, the rocking chair is nowhere near as hard as this sit-up, I promise you. Take a breath in at the top and slowly come all the way back down to the ground. So we're squeezing into the side of the block with flat palms if possible, please, team. I need to hold onto it so I don't drop it. We're going to bring the legs back into neutral, into our start position, set neutral pelvis, lift the right leg up to tabletop, inhale, bring the left leg up to tabletop, exhale. Now we're going to extend that left leg. Bring the right ankle or the shin just above the ankle into the back of the left knee. Keep focusing on the T-zone being nice and tight and we're going to press that block directly up out of the shoulders, pulling them back and down. So inhale, 60% T-zone. Exhale, we're going to take the legs halfway to the ground. Inhale them back up. Exhale, halfway down. Inhale them back up. 
Can you get this right toe to touch the floor without moving it too far from the left knee? Let's try that. Inhale, T-zone tight. Keep the belly flat, imprinted spine. Exhale, touch down. Inhale it all the way up. I know that's so hard on the abs, right? Exhale, slowly take it to the ground. Inhale it up. Now bend the elbows, bring the block back close to the chest. This time we're going to curl and roll up and balance. So T-zone tight, we inhale. I can demo this first. <sighs> Toe taps to the floor, but we keep the same shape at the leg. Now we need to curl back to our start position as we breathe in. Come up again as we breathe out. <sighs> Shoulders down, neck long. Slowly back to the start position. Inhale. <sighs> Curl up as we exhale. You have three more. I'm gonna come and watch you. Inhale, roll it down. Rocking chair it up. Good. Two more. Try not to sit up in a too much of a round back. We wanna sit up nice and straight. Good, last one. Really nice. And obviously if it's too much, come back to the earlier version. Fantastic, take a quick rest. Place the block down, take the knees wide, rock from side to side. Really good team. Rocking chair round to the other side and we go through that same full sequence of trying to find how far we can go. Now, this is really actually transverse abdominals and obliques are working super hard. So if you have one of those oblique sling that is much stronger than the other, in an asymmetrical body than this, I definitely feel it. Um, you will feel a difference from one side to the other. So just check in, notice, see what you can identify. So we're holding onto the block, the elbows are bent. Rolling the shoulders back and down into the ground. We're going to extend the right leg and bring the back of the left kind of calfy shinny ankly bit <laughs> into the back of the knee. And they're glued together and they never come apart. T-zone tight, we inhale, just go halfway, belly flat as you exhale. Bring it back up as you breathe in. Take it down halfway as you breathe out. All right, let's see if we can get that left tippy tiptoe all the way to the ground. Exhale, tap down. Oh, belly flat, hips are not allowed to rock. Oh, now if you need to create more shin, so if you need to slide your leg further away to make this easier, please be welcome to do that. So how close the knees are to each other determines how easy or hard this exercise is. This is easy, this is tough. Easy, tough, choose your level. <laughs> Let's do the full version, T-bone tight, inhale. Up we go. Slowly back. And up. Every vertebrae touch down, hips stay on the ground. You got another three, show me. This is definitely my easier side. And two. And one. Nice, take a break, hug the knees, rock from side to side. We're gonna do one more abs exercise today. And yeah, we're gonna do it twice, using the block the first time in the hands, and the second time, oh no, we're gonna do the double toe tap with the legs first. Sorry, I haven't warmed you up for it. <laughs> I will warm you up for it. So, easiest way to use the prop for the double toe tap, I will demonstrate it. So the rocking chair has been getting you ready for this. If you want to make your double toe tap as easy as you can, have this in the back of the neck, uh, the base of the skull, so you can really extend the back of the neck and focus on the shoulders. Yeah, so this will help you a little bit not to arch your back. So if, you're, if your chin is tucking a little extra, your tail will tuck extra. It's very unusual for the chin to tuck and the low back to arch. So that's your easiest version of a double toe tap. Hardest version of a double toe tap holding the block between the shins because it adds load to your transverse abdominals. So it's up to you if you want to load it up. I'm taking a loaded option today because I've been doing Pilates for a long time. But you might want to take an easier option today and take it to the back of the head So because you've not done single double toe taps before. So choose the option that's right for you. 
Roll the shoulders back and down, imprinted spine, T-zone super tight now as we inhale. Slowly take the tiptoes close to the ground, on, close to the bottom on the ground as you exhale. Bring them back to your tabletop carefully as you bring in, as you breathe in, and slowly lower them down as you breathe out. So often when people do this exercise, they really rush on the way back away from the floor. Don't rush. Because the strength, you know, we're going to build it slowly. Pilates is a slow, focused practice. So once those toes touch the ground, pull the belly in, place the knees over the hips, lift the heels in line with the knees. People come back to this position so often. Be really careful that's not you. You want to start and finish here. So lowering the toes down as you exhale, coming back to your tabletop as you inhale. And you can always go further away if you can keep that belly flat to add more of a challenge. Keep going, you've only got four more. I'll come and check on you, making the four best ones of today. Rachel's gone for block under the head. I can't see other Rachels because her name is in the way. Good work guys, last two. Great work Anita. Last one, fantastic. Hug your knees, give them a squeeze. Go for three circles in one direction. And then the other direction. Oh, I saw Rachel loaded it up too. Excellent. So I'm just gonna do one last exercise. I feel like we've been doing abs forever and ever and ever. And so we'll move on. Um, but the last exercise that we'll work on today, we will all take the block into the hands. This is a boat tuck. tabletop position we're going to extend the legs and the arms up to the ceiling so this is the easiest version of this exercise legs straight up to the ceiling arms up to the ceiling if you want to make it a little bit harder you're going to flex and externally rotate the legs and take them out a little lower still taking the arms up to the ceiling good so this is your exhale this is your inhale now we can make this a little bit harder we can take these arms a little further back. Imprinted spine. We can take those legs a little bit lower. I want you to work to the level where you feel most challenged because you have another 10 of these. Keeping the head down, reaching the arms and legs. Try and keep your arms straight at this point. So your arms extend fully as you extend them away. So your legs are extending fully, your arms are extending fully. Cool, doesn't matter how far the arms are going back, but they are extending fully and bending all the way back to the floor. Getting a little bit of chest press action here without doing any push-ups at all. I reckon you've got four more to go. That looks perfect, Sharon. really good effort. It's not super hard, but it is super technical. We're getting the brain to work. Last two. And last one. Nice, take a break. We're gonna stretch the legs out nice and straight. Keep the block handy still. Time for glute prep. T-zone tight, we inhale, buns of steel. We exhale, and I mean it. Really squeeze that butt so tight that the backs of the thighs rise up off the ground. Hold that for a breath in. And soften as you breathe out. One more time. T-zone tight as we inhale. Buns of steel as we exhale. Good. Really squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold it. Breathe in. And relax. Breathe out. Let's get straight into it, guys. We're going to step the heels in close to the bottom. And I also want you to make sure that the heels line up with your sits bones. They're not wider than the outsides of your hips. Block. Inner thighs. Squeeze. Really squeeze, because the knees aren't allowed to flare, so you can't relax here. Keep the knees in line with the hip bones. Shoulders back and down, palms face the ground. T-zone tight, we inhale, tailbone scoops under, and one vertebrae at a time, rise as you exhale. Try and keep the ribs contained. Try and get all the way straight through the front of the hip. Squeezing the underbutt, squeezing the T-zone, breathe in, and then one vertebrae at a time, roll down through the spine as you breathe out. 
And once you get all the way there, you can relax as you inhale. Then draw up that pelvic floor as you exhale, roll and peel away. Squeezing into that underbutt to lengthen through the front of the hip. Inhale at the top to the straight line through your body and exhale, slowly return it down to the ground. Roll through and return it up. Really scooping the belly in, drawing the rib cage down at the top, inhale. Lower down as we exhale. At the top of the next one, we're going to pause. Pressing down through the left foot as you breathe in. Right leg extends long and straight, breathing out. Return right leg to the ground, inhale. Left leg extends long and straight, exhale. So we're following that straight line from the shoulder through the hip all the way to the toe. So the legs, we're not lifting the legs straight up, we're squeezing it into the block and going straight ahead. Keep going. Exhale, extend the leg. Inhale, press it through the earth. Try and keep those hips the same level at all times. I know that's tough. Bum up as high as you can, get that straight line through the hips. Good, you got two more, finishing on the left side. And once you inhale the left foot back down, exhale, return to the ground. We're gonna roll through the pelvis as we breathe in, scoop the tailbone under and peel away as you breathe out. And at the top, we're gonna to do our last exercise here in our pelvic bridge series. Pelvic curl series. So once you're at the top, we're gonna to start working on our calves. T-zone tight, we inhale. Press into the big toe on the right foot as you exhale. Feel the whole ball of the foot press down through the ground. Feel your calf muscle contract as your heel rises. And inhale to slowly come down through the foot, pressing the heel down. Exhale to push through into a point on the left side. Inhale to slowly bring it down. Keep your hips high. Exhale the right foot. Inhale it down. Exhale the left foot. Inhale it down. Let's go both heels, go. Exhale, they both rise. Now the bum has to stay the same height as the heels come down. Exhale, the rise. Don't let that bum drop as the heels come down. Good, you got four more. Use that inhale to re-squeeze the T-zone. Last two. Last one. Next exhale brings you all the way back to the floor. I'm going to take a quick glute stretch before we continue. Just take the right leg over the left knee. Bring that left knee towards you. You can press your right knee out with your right elbow. Keep the head and shoulders relaxed on the ground. Try and keep the hips heavy. Switching sides. strange bird squawk that I've not heard before. It's almost like a chicken. All right, we're gonna roll onto our side to do a brief sideline series. And today, you're actually able to use your prop as a little pillow and just have your arm resting in front of you with the elbow bent. We're coming to clamp three. So with a clamp three, tuck your tailbone back. The knees are as high as your hips. Often when we set up for clam three, people leave their knees too low. So bring them up and make sure when you flex your feet, you can see your toes with your chin tucked in, looking past your knees. The side of the waist will lift up off the floor. If you are new to Pilates, place your top hand down on the ground in front of your ribs and roll your shoulder back. If you are not new to Pilates, if you're a seasoned practitioner, place your top hand on your hip and roll the shoulder back. T-zone tight, we inhale. The feet stay connected as the top knee opens on the exhale. The hips stay stacked. So exhale, we open. And inhale, we close. Exhale, we open. Inhale, we close. Good. And because we've already started working on our glutes, no doubt you can feel them from the outside to the inside. Four. 
three, two, one. All right, clam kick out. For this one, in clam three, we inhale the T-zone tight, we exhale as the heel and the knee move together and rise. Good, slowly bring them back down as we breathe in. Rising in unison as we breathe out. Don't let that hip move, hey? Keep the shoulder back and down, chin tucked in. One straight line through the crown of the head to the tip of your tail. Sometimes we start to curl forward as we get tired. And I just noticed that I wasn't quite straight and needed to move my block back. So that could also be you. We can make little adjustments as we go on. Tom singing to himself. I can hear it. <laughs> Better than the squawking chicken, I've got to say. Four to go. And three. Can we feel our butt working? I hope so. I certainly can. Two. One. Fantastic work. We're going to take a little break. You can tap that top hip down. We're going to work on our bicycle leg here while we're here and then we're going to shift into a different series. So inhale the T-zone tight, exhale, extend the leg, sweep it all the way back with a flexed foot. Point the toe, inhale, drag it through. So the knee and the ankle are both in line with your top hip bone. Flex the foot, exhale it away, point the toe, kick your own bottom. Then bring the knee through in line with the hip and point to the toe. If you can only do it here, that's totally fine. So flex the foot, sweep it away, heel to the bottom, knee then toe. So we still got to keep the side waist away from the mat. We have to be very careful here that in order to protect your knee and to train good functional movement, so this is strongly related to assisting your patterning in walking and running. So we need to make sure that the knee is going in parallel. It mustn't point down to the ground or up to the ceiling. We want to train our neutral alignment, our parallel alignment. Just feel that underbutt squeeze when you take the leg all the way back. This is the last one in this direction. We're going to reverse now. From a flex foot and a straight leg, inhale, bring the leg up, point the toe, bend the knee, squeeze all the way back. Flex it, bring it through. Point it and send it all the way long. So the side waist is still lifting off the floor. Top shoulder is rolling back. Top hip is gently forward. We never let the top hip roll back. Last two here. Bring the foot all the way forward. Point the toe to the, ceil the floor and the heel to the ceiling. T-zone tight, we breathe in. Take the heel up as we breathe out. Lower it down to the ground, inhale. And then heel rises up again, exhale. So make sure that top hip is staying back now on top of the bottom hip. Sometimes as we get tired, we tuck the tailbone under excessively, which actually inhibits good movement in your Sideline leg raise, which is the one we're working on right now. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower. We have four more of these. This is three. Two to go. Last one. And bring it down, knees together. Tap it out. Wonderful stuff, guys. We're gonna extend the legs. Oh, we're gonna place the block now between the shinny ankle -y bit again and extend the legs fully. Your bottom arm will need to extend underneath your ear and you're going to use your fingertips to press into the floor. For the first few rounds of this exercise, your top hand is going to rest in front of your ribs, also with the fingertips pressing into the floor. So we're making little tents with our hands. We roll back only fractionally for this one, just so we can get some movement. T-zone tightens as we inhale. Lift both legs as you exhale. 
slowly bring it down. So nothing else moves. We're just drawing this top hip up under our rib and then inhale, control it down. Keep the head really heavy on your shoulder. Make sure you're in a straight line. You can even bring your legs just a little bit forward. We got four more. Long straight legs, last two. At the top of this last one, we're gonna hold. Take it up and hold. T-zone tightly, inhale. Keep the ribs dishing down to the hips. Pelvic floor lifting, space between the hip bones squeezing. We're here for another five. Don't let them drop. Four, three, two, one. Relax. You can lengthen your top arm over your ear now to get a big stretch. Reach as far as you can. And then relax it. All right, bring those knees to your chest. We're going to slide around to bring your head to the other end of the mat. It's going to be your pillow, so make sure that there is a straight line through the back. I'm definitely going to keep the pole face. <laughs> Chin tucked in, bottom arm resting comfortably, shoulders stacked, and your top arm can either rest on the ground in front of you or on your top hip for an added challenge. Finding that right angle at the back of the knee and the front of the hip, the feet are stacked, the top hip is slightly forward, and the side of the waist is lifting up off the ground. T-zone strong, we breathe in, Opening the top knee, we breathe out. Inhale to close, exhale to open. Good, you really wanna feel that wrap of the muscles gliding back and absolute flat stillness through the pelvis. You can always touch that and make sure that there's no movement through the back of your pelvis. And another five here. We need quite a lot of this. One more. All right, clam kick out, lifting that whole leg. So belly tight, side of the waist lifted, T-zone on the inhale, whole top leg on the exhale. Lower down on the breath in, lift her up on the breath out. Good, lowering on the inhale, lifting on the exhale. Hi, Cora. <laughs> Down on the inhale, up on the exhale. Good, be really careful that the knee and the foot are traveling together. There's not a leader and a follower, it's a team effort. Three, two, one. Take a quick rest, you can tap the top of the hip. T-zone tight, we inhale. Lift the leg, extend it, and sweep it all the way back on the exhale. Feel that under butt really strong. Point the toe, kick your bottom, and extend it on the breath in. Flex it and sweep it back on the breath out. Point and extend, squeezing into the leg on the inhale. Flex and sweep under butt on the exhale. Good. And we really want to think about the front of the thigh squeezing as we extend the leg fully. Keeping the side of the waist lifted. Squeeze the front of the thigh. And then as you flex through the heel and take the leg back, you want to feel the back of the knee yawn open. All right, last one in this direction. Once we're flexed, exhale back, inhale it forward. Point the toe, squeeze into your underbum as you extend the leg back. Flex and sweep forward, keeping the top of the thigh strong. And then point the toe, squeeze under the bottom, extend all the way back. And how are we going at keeping the hip, the knee and ankle in perfect alignment? Never allowing the knee to point to the floor. It's our headlight, straight on. We only have two more of these. And the next one, as your leg comes forward, pause. Commit to keeping that hip stacked, the side waist lifted, the toe points to the floor, the heel to the ceiling, T-zone squeezes on the breath in, up you go on the breath out. Hover it off the ground, inhale, squeeze 
that heel up as you exhale. Hover on the breath in, squeeze and lift on the breath out. You're doing an amazing job. Keep that leg really nice and straight. Keep the side waist lifted off the ground. Five more of these. Nearly done, guys. Four. Three. Two. One. Take the leg back. Take the block. Place it between the shinny ankle bits. And extend the legs fully, pointing your toes. Extend the bottom arm, plug the fingertips into the floor. Take the top hand in front of the ribs, plug the fingertips into the floor. We're going to lift that whole bottom section of your body by pulling the top hip up under your ribs. T-zone tight, we inhale. Lift and squeeze, exhale. Inhale, control it down. So this is equally an exercise that is about your balance on the floor. We don't want any backwards, forwards motion. And I want you to make sure that you feel it right in the obliques and the side of the waist. Never in the back. You got another five of these. Let me see you. Keep going. Really nice, really good. Beautiful setting of your posture. You're really maintaining good focus of your shoulders. Good, and on that last one, what do we do? We hold. So lift those legs up. We hold for 10. Nine, stay strong. Eight, pelvic floor lifting. Seven, shoulders down. Six, five, four, doing really well, guys. Three, two, and one. Relax it. Fantastic job. All right, let's do some postural work to finish off. You can roll onto your tummy. This guy can rest under your forehead. And that's going to help you really tuck the chin in and stay long through the back of the neck. So the objective with all of our postural setting is never ever to wrinkle this space through the back of the neck. Can't afford Botox for that. You want to keep it nice and long. And just check in that once you've got your forehead resting on the block, does that make it a little easier to tuck the tailbone under and rest the pubic bone into the floor. Today we're going to take the arms all the way back by the hips, take them 40 centimetres away from the hips and you'll feel so much space through the front of the chest. T-zone tight, we inhale, keeping the hands down, the elbows straight, squeeze your shoulders back and down as you exhale. Relax them as you breathe in, squeeze them in and out and back as you breathe out. So I want you to feel them knitting in the shape of a V. Shoulders contract to the midline as you exhale, really squeeze and relax towards the floor as we inhale. We got three more like this. Keep the tailbone top. Two. One. All right, let's start lifting the forehead off the block, but we're gonna keep the gaze down towards the mat. So T-zone tight, we inhale, roll the shoulders back, rise and squeeze as you exhale. Control the forehead back to the block, relaxing the shoulders as we breathe in. Squeeze back and rise as you breathe out, tailbone tucking under. Inhale, control down. Exhale, rise up. Inhale, control down. Exhale, rise up. Keep it going. I'm going to check on how good your thoracic extension is. Let's see it, lovers. Looking good, Rach. Both Rachers. Ah, Rach Shep, try not to look forward so far. Try and keep your chin tucked in. Extend through the back of the neck. Yeah, nice. Good. Sarah, the back of your head can lift a little bit higher at the top. Same for you, Tells. The back of your head can lift. Yes. Keep the bum tucked under. Tailbone rooting down. Looks good, Sharon. Okay, so we're going to hold the head up on the next one. Take an inhale, squeeze the T-zone tight, tuck the tailbone under. 
Exhale, lift the arms by the sides. So we're flying now. As we breathe in, I want your pinky to move down towards the ground and your palms to spiral up towards the ceiling. So the thumbs are now pointing back behind you. And as you exhale, the hands, palms face the floor. Inhale, lift the chest a little higher, pull the thumbs back. Exhale, the palms face towards the ground. So your arms are quite wide from the body here. We want to inhale up a little higher, thumbs up. Exhale, horizontal palm. So your palm should face the same direction as the top of the head. It's a bare minimum as you inhale and lift, squeezing tighter into the shoulder blades. And we exhale, keeping the shoulder blades broad as we come partway down. Squeeze as we rise, broaden as we lower. Keep going. This is one of my favorites. Try and extend the back of your neck, Miss Shep. Good, thumbs up, squeeze and rise. It's hard not to put the chin forward in this one, isn't it? Three more. Looking really good, Sarah. Keep Try and keep your chin in, extend the ears from the shoulders. Extend the ears from the shoulders. Last two, really nice. Last one, take it back into your child's pose. Good work, guys. Once you're in your child's pose, rest your hands back beside your feet. And if it's more comfortable to bring your block with you and rest it under your forehead, please feel free. Extend the arms in front of you now. Really reach long through the sides. I'm going to pick the head up off the floor and then just drop your hips to one side. You can walk your hands a little further over to the other side. Come back to the center and drop your hips to the other side. Come back to the center, tuck your chin in and slowly roll up through the spine. So I'm going to just loosen off the quads before we stretch our hip flexors. So take the hands behind the back. Your fingers can either face out, away from you, or in towards your bottom. It's not so great to turn them all the way around. Roll the shoulders together. Scoop the bottom up as you press your knees down. So we're just loosening off the fronts of the quadriceps. Try and find that nice long line through the back of the neck. And then sitting the bottom back down. Right foot is gonna come forward 90 degrees at the back knee, the front knee, and the front hip. Right hand is on the knee, left arm is up by your ear. Scoop the belly in, get really long through the left side of the waist, breathe in, and then drop the shoulder tip to the right as you breathe out. Oh my, that turned on straight away. Now inhale the right arm up as well, get really long. You can walk your right foot a little further forward and then press the hips forward as you breathe out. Careful not to let the low back arch. The way we get this hip flexor to open is by squeezing this butt cheek and pressing it forward. And lengthening the ribs up out of the hips. One more big breath in. And then slide the hips back. Draw the toes towards your nose. Inhale, arch the back. And exhale, try and bring the belly towards the thigh. One more big breath in. Exhale, sit back, point your toe. Just let the spine round, create lots of space through the upper back. Feel the shoulders broaden. And then chin dropping in as we roll up. We'll take this right foot back next to our butt cheek and we'll come back up onto the knees. The left foot is coming forward now. The left hand will rest down on the left knee. Right hip comes forward, scooping the belly in as that right arm comes all the way up. Inhale, get super long, squeeze the right butt cheek. Exhale, drop the left shoulder, open to the side. I caramba, Rachel Shep, I blame you for how much this hurts today. <laughs> Keep squeezing that right butt cheek, spiraling the right hip forward, drawing the left hip back. Keeping the ribs drawing in, even though the side of your waist is getting really long. 
Empty the exhale. Bring the left arm up as well. Draw both ribs up out of the hips. Keep the front ribs down. You can walk your left foot further forward as you squeeze the right butt to come in deeper, keeping the tailbone tucked. And then extending that left leg, toes towards the nose, hands on the blocks or the ground. Arch the back, breathe in. Belly along the thigh, breathe out. Take an inhale. Now point the toes, sit all the way back, broaden the upper back as you exhale. Rolling up. The last stretch we're going to take today is a square pose. This doesn't work for everyone. So just know that you will get equally good a stretch if you just cross your legs and lean forward. But what we're going to try and do, really open 90 degree bend at the left leg, bringing the right foot out to the outside of the knee, non-negotiable. If you place it on the inside of the knee, you'll do ten lengthen the ligaments on the outside of your ankle too much. And then we're looking to place this part of the calf into this part of your sole. So into the arch of your foot. Breathe in, long spine, breathe out. See if that knee will settle down towards the other foot. I'm not getting anywhere today. If this is really uncomfortable for you, and I promise you it's really uncomfortable for me, you can bring that foot forward and walk the arms out. And that is exactly where I need to be today. Keep the tailbone wrapping back and down, long through the spine. Rolling back up, we're going to switch it around. So it's going to be the right foot that's at the long 90, the left foot that comes to the outside of the right knee. We can aim the left leg in towards the right foot. Walk the arms forward, press the tailbone down and fold. I can tolerate it on this side. I'll go for symmetry, I think. And then slowly rolling up. We're going to drop the ear to one side. Gently place the hand on the head. Drop the other shoulder down. Draw the nose towards the armpit very gently. Release the hand, bring your head to the centre, go to the other side, hand on the top of the head, pressing the shoulder down, nose towards the armpit. And then release, take a big breath in, stretch the arms up, interlace your fingers, press them toward the ceiling, keeping the hips both pressing down, get a little bit longer, tip to one side, just spend a sec here, enjoy the stretch. Come all the way back to the center. Switch to the other side. Take a moment. All the way back up, release the hands, bring them down. We're gonna roll onto the knees, tuck the toes, send the hips back, create a C shape through the spine. Press the heels down as we press the four edges of the feet down through the ground. Let the head relax, nod yes, shake no. And keeping the belly scooping in, we stack one vertebrae at a time, rolling up through the spine, squeezing the shoulders back and down. As the chin draws in, we extend to the crown. Thank you so much for your hard work, guys.